The story starts with an armed officer named Royce. He falls from the spaceship, and during his fall, he wakes up. Somehow, he opens his parachute and lands in a forest. He starts looking around to see if anyone else is there. Then, a tough Mexican drug cartel enforcer named Cuchillo falls the same way. As soon as Cuchillo lands, he points his gun at Royce and threatens to shoot him. Both of them are confused about how they ended up there, and things start to get tense. While they are arguing, another person falls from the sky, but without a parachute, and he dies right away. This shocks Royce and Cuchillo, suddenly, someone starts shooting at them. They quickly find cover and come up with a plan to catch the attacker. Luckily, the plan works, and Royce can hold the man at gunpoint. When they question him, they learn that the man is a Spetsnaz soldier named Nikolai, who also ended up in the forest the same way. The three of them decide to put their differences aside and work together to find a way out of the forest. After walking for some time, they come across a tough-looking lady aiming a sniper at them. She's Isabel, an IDF sniper. At first, she threatens to shoot them one by one, but when Royce assures her they are all on the same side, she lowers her weapon. Isabel tells them that she has been through many forests in her life, but she has never seen this one before. She also mentions that she saw more people falling from the sky with parachutes. Hearing this, the group becomes hopeful about finding a way out and heads in the direction Isabel mentioned. On their way, they see two men fighting fiercely. One is Mombasa, an officer from Sierra Leone, and the other is Stans, a death row inmate from the United States. As the story unfolds, Royce, a tough guy, joins a group of six strangers. They start walking through a forest and hear some screams. To their surprise, they find a regular-looking guy hanging upside down from a tree branch. He lacks any combat experience. Royce, who stands out in the group that includes skilled individuals with blades and machetes, shoots the branch down and saves the man. The rescued guy introduces himself as Dr. Edwin, a famous physician from California. He tells them that the last thing he remembers is leaving his house for work. None of them have any idea about where they are or how they ended up in this place. Royce takes charge of the group but doesn't share much about himself. Isabel, one of the group members, suspects that he might be a mercenary or a former member of a black ops military unit. As they continue their journey, Royce theorizes that they have been brought to the forest for a specific reason, given that they are all skilled assassins, except for Dr. Edwin. In the next scene, they come across empty cages and a plant with a neurotoxin. Nikolai, one of the group members, is fascinated by the plant, but Dr. Edwin stops him and explains how dangerous it is. He removes a part of the plant with a tiny scalpel for further study. They continue their journey and add another person to their group, Hanzo, a Yakuza member who prefers to stay silent. Later, Isabel points out to Royce that their magnetic compass isn't working in this place. Royce reveals that the sun hasn't changed its position in the sky since they arrived, indicating that this forest is unlike any ordinary one. As they keep searching through the forest, Mombasa accidentally triggers a series of deadly traps. Numerous logs, sharp objects, and spikes launch toward them. In the chaos, Isabel nearly falls into a pit filled with pointed sticks, but Royce saves her just in time. After narrowly escaping a series of deadly traps, the group huddles together to discuss their next steps. They analyze the size and weight of the traps and conclude that they were meant for something much larger and more dangerous than humans. Nearby, they discover the decaying body of a U.S. Special Forces officer. When Nikolai goes through the soldier's pocket, he finds a document indicating the soldier was supposed to be deployed in Afghanistan. Royce examines the corpse and speculates that the giant creature the traps were meant for might have killed the soldier as they talk. They sense they're being watched by an unknown presence using thermal vision. The group opts to press forward and soon realizes that they're not on Earth, as the unfamiliar sky becomes apparent. The strange occurrences they've witnessed start to make sense. Royce highlights the urgency of creating a plan to find their way home. Back in the forest, they are attacked by enormous alien dogs that move at incredible speed. The group uses their guns to fight off most of the dogs, but one menacingly approaches Isabel. When her sniper rifle jams, she resorts to her revolver, firing repeatedly, to no effect. Isabel considers a desperate move, but to their surprise, the alien dog withdraws. Gathering as a group again, Royce alerts them that they are being hunted. He instructs everyone to reload their weapons because the attacks are unpredictable and not reloading would be foolish. However, they discover that Cuchillo is missing, prompting a worried search. They eventually locate Cuchillo, who is wounded and strangely begging for help. He doesn't face the group and continues pleading in an eerie manner. 
Isabel, the most compassionate member, decides to assist him, but Royce intervenes, suspecting it's a trap. To prove his point, Royce throws a stone near Cuchillo, activating a hidden trap. Reluctantly, the group leaves Cuchillo behind as he is already doomed. Isabel mercifully ends his suffering with her sniper rifle. Strangely, even after his death, his voice crying for help lingers in the air. The group, led by Royce, follows the alien dog's footprints and arrives at a mysterious hunting camp. As the group explores the area, they come across a strange creature that's been tied up. Suddenly, four larger and more menacing creatures arrive, and they brutally kill Mombasa. Thankfully, the remaining survivors manage to escape and plunge into a nearby river. Here, they are introduced to the predators, the true kings of the jungle. There are four of them, each with its unique abilities. The classic, the tracker, the falconer, and the berserker. These predators are large in size and employ advanced technology to track their prey and remain hidden. Reaching the riverbank, Isabel angrily confronts Royce for using Mombasa as bait just to catch a glimpse of the predators. Royce defends himself, claiming he wants to gather information about the creatures they are up against. He then implores Isabel to share her knowledge of the aliens. Initially hesitant, she eventually reveals that she's heard of these creatures before. In the jungles of Guatemala, a team of special forces encountered an alien creature that could conceal itself and fire lasers from its eyes. With this revelation, Royce rallies the group and asks for their assistance in defeating the predators. In the subsequent scene, the group puts their plan into action, with Edwin running into the forest as bait. Predictably, one of the predators, the classic, starts tracking Edwin. Seemingly the least intelligent among them, it fails to notice the group waiting to attack from a distance. The plan works, and just as the classic is about to pounce on Edwin, Isabel takes a shot, seemingly killing the predator. However, upon closer inspection of the body, the group realizes that Isabel had missed her shot. Suddenly, a human wearing an advanced alien suit appears before them, introducing himself as Noland. He explains that he has successfully evaded the predators and survived in the forest for years. After the introductions, Noland takes the group to his makeshift shelter, which appears to be a derelict spaceship. Inside, he provides more information about the predators, describing them as having two types, small and large. Scientifically, he explains their objective, to gather warriors and deadly animals from other worlds to bring to this planet, where their primary goal is to hunt and improve their combat skills. It's like a real-life video game, but Noland emphasizes that's not why he plays video games. He also reveals that the two sets of predators have been at war for centuries. Upon hearing Noland's information, Royce devises a daring plan, to liberate the smaller predator from the camp, form an alliance, and use their spaceship to return to Earth. As the group rests at night, Noland secretly locks the door from the outside and starts filling the hideout with suffocating smoke. He reveals his true identity as a scavenger, with the sole intention of luring the group to steal their weapons. Inside the hideout, the group desperately attempts to open the locked door, but their efforts are in vain. With time running out, Royce takes a risk and fires an explosive at the door, hoping to attract the predators. His plan works, and soon the predators invade their hideout. The tracker, one of the predators, finds Noland and viciously tears him apart. Then, it approaches the remaining group, breaking the door. Surprisingly, instead of killing them right away, the tracker seems to toy with them. During the ensuing chase, everyone except Nikolai manages to escape. The tracker catches Nikolai, brutally stabbing him. In his final act, Nikolai detonates a bomb, obliterating both himself and the tracker. Meanwhile, the rest of the group reaches the outside and hears the explosion, momentarily relieved. But their respite is short-lived as the berserker arrives. Recognizing their imminent death, Stansfield makes the ultimate sacrifice. He holds off the berserker, allowing his friends to flee. Tragically, the berserker rips out Stans' spine, killing him instantly. With Stansfield's death, only four members of the group remain. As they reach a field, Hanzo, the Yakuza member who had been quiet throughout the journey, senses something amiss and instructs the group to leave. The falconer approaches him, and Hanzo grabs a samurai sword from Nolan's base. He chooses to engage in a final, honorable duel. Surprisingly, despite having advanced technology, the falconer respects Hanzo's courage and opts for a fair fight. The battle is intense, with both warriors giving it their all. Ultimately, Hanzo manages to slice off the falconer. However, Hanzo succumbs to his injuries seconds later. As the remaining three members head toward the camp, Edwin gets injured by a trap. Despite his attempts to get up, 
he realizes that he has become a liability to the group. As the group faces mounting challenges, Royce suggests to Isabel that she should leave him behind, but she refuses. As a result, Royce decides to continue his journey alone. Sadly, while Isabel is helping the injured Edwin, they both get caught in a net trap. Meanwhile, Royce reaches the hunting camp and confronts the smaller captive predator. In a surprising twist, he communicates with the predator in human language and strikes a deal that could benefit them both. Royce offers to release the predator in exchange for its assistance in escaping the planet. Astonishingly, the predator agrees, and upon its release, it activates a nearby spaceship for Royce. Suddenly, the large and powerful berserker predator arrives at the scene, leading to a fierce battle between the two predator species. As expected, the berserker defeats and kills the smaller predator. After the victory, the berserker destroys the spaceship that was about to take Royce back to Earth, seemingly leaving him stranded. Meanwhile, Edwin and Isabel manage to escape the net trap and move further. Surprisingly, Edwin reveals his true, sinister nature. Back on Earth, he had committed multiple murders and was considered a psycho. Edwin now expresses his desire to stay on this planet permanently, even if he is alone. Isabel realizes the danger of the situation as Edwin's poison-laced scalpel cuts her throat. Paralyzed by the neurotoxin, she becomes helpless. Royce, missing the spaceship, returns to find Isabel and Edwin. He carries the paralyzed Isabel away, believing that the predator has attacked her. As Royce tends to her wounds, Edwin attempts to attack him from behind. However, Royce is prepared and counters the attack, using Edwin's scalpel to kill him. He then implants explosives within the paralyzed Edwin and lures the remaining predator. When the berserker attacks Edwin, a massive explosion occurs. But it isn't enough to eliminate the predator. Royce is ready for the next step, knowing that the predators locate their prey using thermal vision. He covers himself with mud and ignites fires everywhere to create confusion. The plan seems to work initially as the berserker gets disoriented. However, it eventually tracks Royce's heartbeat and launches an attack. As Isabel regains consciousness, she summons her strength to reach her sniper rifle. Just as the berserker is about to kill Royce, Isabel shoots it in the shoulder. Seizing the opportunity, Royce gets up and uses a makeshift axe to decapitate the berserker, ending the chaos once and for all. The movie concludes with Isabel and Royce contemplating how they can find a way back to Earth, all the while aware of new prey descending from the sky.